Procter & Gamble was caught red-handed recently putting benzene in some of their products, like Old Spice. Benzene is an extremely dangerous carcinogen, and basically the way that it works is it does to human cells what soap does to bacteria, and that is that it removes the outer layer and exposes the in inner parts of the cell to the environment. But Procter & Gamble has a lot of advertising money that goes into YouTube and other Google products, and they also have political interests that are aligned with Google and YouTube and all of the Google product portfolios. If this showed up in your Google News Feed, I would be incredibly surprised. And in fact, if it showed up at all, it probably did not show up above the fold. It probably showed up many pages in to your Google News Feed. Today we're going to be going over apps again from the F-Droid store. These are open apps and they're incredibly secure, very small, and don't take up a lot of battery life. Before there was Google News, there was RSS, which stands for Real Simple Syndication. It's an old technology, but it's a good one. Brought into market by Netscape and Sir Sudo, which is Mental Outlaw's friend, did a video on this topic very, very recently. Probably about a week before this video came out or maybe 10 days before this video is going to come out. And today, the specific things that we're going to do with RSS is we're going to talk about RSS feeders that are available in the F-Droid store and two types. We're going to do the more full featured RSS feeder and reader, which is for more newbie type users. And we're going to do a simple one for once you have your feeds curated. Personally, I prefer simple. I use the app feeder. And you can find all of these in the store. So we can do a quick search here. Feeder, we can see this in the store. I actually have this installed this time around. And then Flim Deck Sync is the other recommendation. And this is going to be the first one that we are going to have a look at. Among the more full featured RSS feeders and readers, there's Flim Deck Sync, there's Nice Feed, Spa RSS, there's a few others. I really like Flim Deck Sync for a couple reasons. Number one, when you first open it, Really simple thing, but I like to see it on any of my applications. It comes in dark theme by default, so it doesn't blast that white light in your eyes in the dark. That's really important because this video is coming out during winter and a lot of time, actually it's fall, but short days, a lot of time is spent in the dark, so you don't want that blasted forward. Also, a lot of phones have OLED screens, so brighter screens use up a lot of battery faster. The design I find is incredibly easy to use. is very intuitive. You've got the little checkbox down here for more colors red. You can view unreads by clicking on the eyeball. Of course, I don't have anything feeding in here yet. You have settings up in the upper right hand corner. You actually have a secondary settings here. And there's a couple nitpicks that I do have with the design language of this. And the first one is this hamburger menu is in the upper left hand corner. Not very convenient for right handed people, which most people are. And then also there's a second set of settings in this hamburger menu that's not in the other one, which are the important ones for import and export of OPML files, which we'll talk about later on when you go to test various other RSS apps if you find nitpicks that you don't like about whichever one you decided to install. First thing we're going to do, what makes this a full featured RSS reader? And what it does is this has an actual search function, which is not here. It's in the hamburger menu. You click the hamburger menu, then you hit this plus button. Then you type in whatever you want. This reader app had the best search that I could find from really any of the more full featured ones to where it could reliably pull various feeds. So we've got CNET news and then a downward swipe will refresh. So it will pull everything in. And then you see all of your articles. You can star articles. You can mark articles as read. So you can view unreads or you can view all. So those ones that I erased, you can see there's a slightly less bright font showing up. Or you can just view favorites, which I thought I starred one, but I must not have. Favorites, so you can just view your favorites, which is really handy for keeping track of everything in the app. 
The other thing you can do is you can open up an article and if it didn't download completely, you can click in the menu and then see in browser and you can read the entire article, which is a really handy feature in case something like this just only downloaded the headline. Now there's kind of a quirk with this search function for adding different RSS feeds. So I'm just going to give one example here. This is a just a Christian feed that I have in my RSS. This one right here I think is the feed. When I go to actually refresh, it's going to throw an error. And the situation with this error is the RSS search function went to look for this and the page that it pulled up, it's not the actual RSS feed. To get the real RSS feed, we have to go and find the actual URL location where it should be coming from. And that leads us into why we would use a simpler RSS reader. And the reason why you would use that is because you already have the URLs of the various RSS feeds that you want access to. To get this to work, you have to go over to your browser and you can search around the internet. Most news sites will have their RSS feed in the bottom, but the search function will actually pull that up. But a website like Feedspot will have a complete list of everything that you would want. And in this case, we can just long press this, copy the link address, and then switch back over and actually fix the URL by long pressing and then edit feed. And then now I can paste, refresh, and everything will come in. Of course, all of the functionality is here. With all of this done, we can move on to a more minimalist RSS reader, which would be Feeder in this case. So we're going to switch over to Feeder. And this time we're going to go over and we're going to, because we need the link, we're going to go over and pull one of our CNET links here. So RSS News. Everything through Feeder has to be added by URL. So in the upper right hand corner, very simple menu. There's add feed, edit feed, delete feed, import and export. This of course doesn't come with dark theme automatic theme. We're going to go with night theme and everything here should be dark from now on. We can go to the menu, click add feed, and then paste the URL. Of course it comes up just fine. Click. This is where Feeder is in a different league for me and it's this tagging function. This tagging will allow you to throw groups of URLs, groups of feeds into batches so that you can categorize them. This one is technology, this one is world news, this one is XYZ, however you want to sort it. CNET is primarily tech so I just mark that as tech. Next you have different settings, fetch full articles by default. I like to do that, these are mainly text so there's no real limitation as far as how many of them I can download. Notify me, this is push notifications in case you're on the Google phone, which is the focus of this channel and you're missing your push notification. I usually leave generate extra unique IDs marked off. I've never had an issue with that. And then I usually use the default, but you can use various other options down here in this bottom section. Now that I click OK, we see everything that pops up. When you click on a story, it's going to mark it as red on your primary list. But now that we're here, the option to actually view in web browser is this button in the upper right hand corner. It'll take you right over to the web browser. And then if we want to go back, that article disappears. We can click on the eye and it will reappear at the top of the list again. Like most RSS readers, if you click the little checkbox in the bottom right hand corner, so as part of the design language, it will mark everything as red. In the upper left hand corner, again, they like that placement for these hamburger menus for some reason, you can see it created this category up here for tech and it will aggregate all of your tech blogs in that section with that specific tag for you.
which I find really convenient. We're coming up towards the end of this video. So just to cover one of the things that you do want to remember when you're using these different app apps is almost all of them have OPML format in their menus of some form where you can export and import. This means you can export a simple and small text file and move it from RSS app to RSS app with minimal effort if you ever want to switch. And like I said, the Ftroid store, almost all of the apps are really small. I think Feeder is less than four megabytes and Flim DexSync is maybe six megabytes. So maybe it's a little bit more than that, but you can switch around these and you're barely going to take any time downloading them from Ftroid. So go ahead, look around and see which one works best for you, which one you like the design language the most on. The beauty of the Ftroid store is that the apps are small, efficient, and really highly secure. If you have something that you like as far as apps, please let me know about them. Now, Google has, as of this week of recording, disabled the thumbs down. And I think the next thing that they're going to go after is the comments because they've been deleting some of your comments on some of my videos to where I can't even pull them up. So if you do want to leave a comment, go ahead. I do have my name in XDA forms, which is Nick Henke, Nick dash Henke. Or if you want to hop over to Odyssey, I've never had an issue with Odyssey deleting my comments. The channel name is exactly the same. It's my full name, Nicholas Henke, and I will answer them for you. I'm excited to have a chat for those of you who do want to talk. Thanks for stopping by. This is Nick signing out.